Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lenny. So a lot of people are making money on YouTube without ever showing their face. And one popular niche is around lo-fi music channels. So people are creating monetizable lo-fi music channels and automating the entire thing with barely any effort at all. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your own AI agent that handles everything for you. So from generating music and visuals to uploading videos. Let's build your passive income lo-fi channel the smart way. Let's get started. First things first, I'm going to walk you through how this workflow works. And then after which I'm going to walk you through step by step on how I was able to build this workflow. So the first uh, part of my with through, which is this part, is where I generate the music. And in order to generate the music, I'm using APIs from Suno API. I've done a video on how to make music using Suno AI. I'm going to leave it on the screen somewhere so that you can go watch it. And then for this particular tutorial, I'm going to be leveraging your APIs uh, to generate the music. And then once I generate the music, I'm going to be using OpenAI or ChatGPT to help me with generating an image which I'll be using for my video and then I'll be writing that image to file and also writing the music that was generated earlier on to file as well and this part of the agent really trends the video and this is optional I just wanted to reduce the runtime so I decided to trim the audio but this part is entirely optional okay you don't need to include it in your agent and then the last but one part of this flow is where I combine the music and the image to create a video. This is like the main thing. This is the main thing, okay? And then once I have the output, I read the outputs from my disk and then I post it onto YouTube. If you haven't watched my previous video where I created an AI agent that can automate to your whole YouTube content flow, I would also say that you should watch that one as well because it will be a good way to understand how this whole flow works. So now that you know how this whole flow works on a high level, um, I also want to talk about the tools you need to build this flow. So first things first, you need NHN. So NHN is the tool I'm using to build this flow. So you need NHN. We also need your Google API keys. So because we will post in on YouTube, you need to make sure that you have your Google API keys ready. I mean, not let to do so. You just have to go to the Google Cloud Console and really they give you like free credits. So you don't have to pay for that as well. The other thing you need as well is because you're leveraging ChatGPT, what you need is Vimi API keys as well for your OpenAI account and to do that you also need to go to platform.openai.com and then you create an API key and then the last thing you need is also like API keys from Suno. So Suno gives you uh, about 50 credits uh, to use uh, which is good for about six music audio files so you can really go to Suno and then uh, take on API keys. You would have one generator for you and then you just copy that. So those are really the things we need in order to bring this particular agent to life. So now that you know all that, let's get started. So the first thing is to click on create workflow. If you've been watching my tutorial videos on M8N, you know that it should always start with the first step or a trigger. So I'm going to click on this. Uh, for what I should do, I decided to trigger manually, but really you can trigger on the schedule. So let's go with our uh, trigger on a schedule. So I'm just going to check as default and say I uh, run this every day okay and then i'm gonna come here so now that i have my trigger which is settled to run every day the next part of my agent is really where i generate the audio or where i generate the music and to do so like i mentioned you can use suno ai so when so does the suno ai the first step for us would be to generate the music okay so if you come in here and you look into the api documentation kind of know what you want to generate a lo-fi channels really is usually instrumentals so you just want to make sure that you are going with like the default and to do so i'm gonna come in here and then i'm gonna click on this and i'm gonna use an http request so i'm gonna click on http so 
you can come in here. You don't need to put in these things manually. You can just copy it. Um, if you are using N8N, you can just copy Co. So you just click on this and then you come into M8N and then you click on Import Curl. And then you put it here and then you click on Import. So as you can see, all the required fields have been populated for us. So what you have to do is you need to put in your API keys. So when you come to the bearer token, you really need to put in your API keys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into Suno. And then I'm going to copy my API keys and I would paste it in here. You're putting your API keys and then in terms of like the prompt, so you can put in what your prompt should be. So I'm just going to keep it as defaults, which is a calm and relaxing piano track with soft melodies. Um, you can really change what you want the prompt to be. Okay. And then in terms of um, the title i'm just gonna say a uh, peaceful piano meditation and in terms of the style i mean i have it the default was classical but you can really change it to no fi and then um instrumentals you said true because you just want it to be instrumentals and in terms of the model you just leave it as default and the callback url as well so this is what i have as a setup I'm going to go back to the canvas. Once you generate the music, you want to always check and see if it's been generated. In order to know whether the music has been generated, you want to get the music generation details. And as you can see, the status descriptions here. If it's pending, it means that the task is waiting to be processed. If it says text success, it means that the lyrics have been generated completely. In this case, we are not using any lyrics. So really what we will be looking for and money should not be the first success and the full success. Okay, when our status is success, it means that tracks have been generated successfully so in order to gather music generation details we come into our api documentation rivers done a copy the code and the call we come into our m8n portal and then we look for our 8http request because they're going to be making this request and click on import call and then we have done a click on import and again in order to get the details of the music we also need to again enter our API keys. So I'm going to come back into Sono, copy the API keys and then paste it in here. All right. So we have our API keys in here ready to go. The next step for us is to do an if else statement. Okay. So if I'm putting an if else statement, but really what I want to do is I want to put in a delay because sometimes it does take a while to generate. So I'm going to put, let's say, a delay of, let's say, two minutes. Um, after using Sony for a while, I realized that two minutes is enough to get us to run. So I'm going to put in a delay and I'm going to put in an if else statement. Okay. So the reason why I need an if else statement is because I only want it to continue processing after the status is successful. Okay. That's the only reason why I need an if else statement. So in order for me to know the values to put in here, it just makes sense for me to execute the entire workflow so that I know the inputs to put in, in here. So I'm going to execute the entire workflow so that we see what we have at this point. So after running the entire workflow, uh, we have some data in here which we can input into our if else statement. So really what we want to check is the status. So we want to make sure that the status is successful. So if the status is successful, really what we want to do is we want to continue. So the value in here would be success based on the explanation I gave Enya on. Okay, so now with the if else statement, the next step for us is to include what should happen after the status is successful. Because if the status is successful, what it means is that we have all the data we need. We have the audio file ready and we have everything we need to proceed. Okay, so now that our, our audio has been generated, are we been able to verify with the if else statement, the next step for us is to generate our image. And to do so, uh, we are going to be leveraging uh, ChatGPT. I mean, if it needs any LLM of your choice, there's already an OpenAI agent that has been created to generate image. So I'm not going to build from scratch. So I'm just going to click on generate image. And really in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my OpenAI account. Like I mentioned, if you don't already have an API account, then it's better for you to set one up. In the prompt, all I want to say is I just want to generate an image based on the title of the audio. So all I'm going to say is generate an image 
and I'm gonna drag the title in here and I'm gonna give it a sit theme by my layout to be used because I'm gonna be using this as a long form picture video and then in terms of options I'm just gonna say the style I'm just gonna say be more natural and then in terms of quality I'm gonna say HD quality and um, at this point I'm gonna click on test okay so it shows that uh image has been generated for us as you can see i have a very beautiful image in here once this image is generated the next thing i want to do is i just want to write this image to file so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here and then i'm going to click on um, the right to file node and i'm going to select this and i'm going to say write to disk and what i'm really going to put in here is the path i want this file to be written to okay so i'm going to come in here i just want it to be written to this file path called image okay all right so now that i have my image generated um i've written it to file the next step is also to uh, download the the video as well so in order to do that i'm gonna come in here and i'm gonna download the audio so i'm gonna use that sctp request to download the audio i really all i want to do in order to download the audio is i'm just gonna grab the audio URL at all in here and in terms of um the options i'm gonna select a response and i'd say i really want this to be in a file format today and yeah that'll be all for uh downloading the audio and by just doing this it would automatically download the audio for us Okay, so now that we have our music downloaded, um, the next step for us is also to write the downloaded music to BISC. So in order to do so, we are going to come in here and then we are going to look for the write to BISC uh, node and we are going to click on write file. And again, what we want to do is we just want to put in the the file part as well. So we know that the file parts for our image is in the temp folder. So really we are just gonna put our music file in the same folder as well. And in terms of what the input binary name would be, it's just gonna call it a um, music file as well. So this is how it looks like as a moment. The next step for me is to include a wakes, a delay. The reason why I want to include a delay is as you can see we have two different strings coming in and in order for us to progress to the next stage I want to make sure that all these processes have been completed so in order to do so I'm just going to add a delay um, and this delay doesn't have to be a lot I'm probably just going to add um, a 10 second delay in here and uh, I'm going to link it up with the other stream as well so that if the stream finishes it will just be here waiting while this one kicks off as well but after i have the delay added a mix up for me is uh to trim the audio and really if you are using this layer youtube channel you don't need to trim the audio but i just didn't want this entire process to take wrong using it with Suno ai you get about four minutes of audio files and i really didn't want this i didn't want to be waiting around uh for more than four minutes so um, that's why I just want to have um, the trend here, the trend function if, in here. But you don't need to have the trend function. Right from this process, you can go ahead and connect this to a video generator too. But because I want to do this the free way, I'm going to be using FFNPEG, which is really a library that helps you make some changes to files, edit images, create videos, trim, and do any sort of like analysis or any form of transformations on an image or an audio or a video. So I'm using FFmpeg, um, if you want to install FFmpeg, I'm gonna link a video um, I saw on YouTube that helped me with my setup. I'm gonna link that as well in this video so that you can go check it out as well. But really what you need is uh, you beat them as a huge node so that you're able to um, execute a command to your file. So this is the command you're gonna be using. And really what this means is that um, this what I find now it needs that it does already an existing file in the particular directory temp does overwrite it and just trim this to 15 seconds and name it as a uh, trimmed audio so that's really what this command does so I'm gonna add this command in here so that it trims my audio file by 50 to 15 seconds and then once the audio file has been trimmed the next step is for me to now combine the music and then the audio file this is like the main part of the tutorial and it really did take me a lot of time to figure it out but i'm so glad i was able to figure it out eventually but this is the main part so again you need an execute command node and you really need to use this particular command you see in here and really 
what this command does is that it's saying that loop over the image and also the trimmed audio file and then basically combine it to create an output video or you can leave the output video or anything and just keep it to like um 15 seconds as we had defined earlier on this would really combine the image and also combine the audio and give us an output video file so this is a command that I'll be using. So once this is done, it's really going to output a video called outputvideo.mp4 and this will be stored in your directory on your, um, wherever you're hosting um, your n 8 and instance. So in order for you to upload this onto YouTube, you want to make sure that you are reading the file. So you really want to um, read what's in the file. So in this case, I'm going to select the read files from disk node. And all I really want to do is I want to come in here, read the files on the disk, and I'm going to enter the path. So the path to my video. So remember that my video was stored in the temp folder, and the name of my video is output video got mt4. So that's really the file path I'm going to use. And in terms of the file extension, I'm just going to keep it as um, mp4. So really just um, filter out only files that have an mt4 in them. Mind you that. All my other files, like the image file I generated, is still an MQ4 file. It's really a GPG file. Um, the audio I generated is an MP3, so the video will be an MP4 file. Okay, I'm going to run the entire workflow up until this stage so that you have an idea of what we are looking at right now. So let me click on test workflow. Okay, so our image has been generated. Uh, this is what our image looks like. Be beautiful. I'm going to go back. Uh, let's see. Okay, so. A video has been generated and if I should click on the view um, button here you see how a video looks like okay so this is beautiful I like the output already so now that our video has been generated the next step for us is to post it onto YouTube so in order to do so again we're gonna use the HTTP node uh, so if I use a YouTube node as well but um, I find that the HTTP node uh, works better for me so that's why I'm using the HTTP node and what I'm really gonna use is I'm gonna use a post method and in terms of the URL if you go into your Google console and in order to post on YouTube, um, you need to use the callback URL. Oh, I mean, in terms of authentication, uh, you just want to use the YouTube authentication. So I'm just going to use the YouTube Auth2 API. I already have my YouTube account set up, like I mentioned earlier on. And in terms of our parameters, I just want to send the body and I want to send the init end file. And I'm going to call it data. In terms of the input data and field name, I'm going to use data because that's what we got. In out that was the output of our previous steps. And yeah, really, you could add some additional options. So uh, for instance, if you want us to add like batching, uh, timeouts, you can do so. Um, but really, I'm just going to leave it here and I'm going to at this point test the entire workflow. So as you can see, the video is already being posted in here. It's processing, so it will take some time before uh, we're able to see it. Um, but let's see. Okay, so our workflow is complete. So if I come in here and then I play the video, um, now you see. So I'm going to play this now. And this is how it looks like. Okay. Okay, so that is it for today's tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. I'm also going to link the templates and the tutorial as well on my Kofar page. You'd find it uh, linked in the comment section below. Um, but yeah, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then please do subscribe and Turn on your notification bell so that you never miss an update from me. But for now, that is all for today and thank you for watching. See you in the next one.